Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Eric and I hope you're having a great week. In today's video, we're gonna mix it up a little bit, uh, a change of pace, if you will. We tend to get lots of emails that talk about the dangers of eating pork. Often we'll get a video link that shows someone pouring a soda on a pork chop and out come the worms and the parasites and all this other crazy stuff. Uh, a lot like this right here. So what we're looking at is a pork chop that uh, had some soda poured on it and wow, that's a, that's a big worm. So obviously a video intended to incite an emotional response. And before I did anything harsh, like convert my entire channel over to vegan sausages, I thought we would do this experiment ourselves. So that's exactly what we're gonna do in today's video. Okay, so before we begin this experiment where we pour pop on pork to see whether or not worms come out of it and parasites and all that stuff, I do wanna say that I'm completely aware of a microscopic parasite that's found in some pork. Not all pork, but some pork and wild game. This particular parasite is called trichinellia, and if you eat undercooked or raw pork or wild game, you could end up with something called trichinosis, which is definitely not good. So if you work with pork, wild game, if you make sausages, or if you make cured meats, you definitely wanna stick around to the end of this video because I'm gonna share with you three things that you could do at home to render the trichinellia parasite completely inactive or destroy it altogether. Let's see how this experiment turns out. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna run to our butcher shop. They got some fresh pork in today. I had them cut me a couple chops and we're gonna pick that up as well as some other products. And then uh, we're gonna go to a couple grocery stores and pick up some pork that's not so fresh. A couple different uh, stores just so that it's not coming from the same pig. And then we are gonna run some experiments and see exactly what happens when we put pop on pork and, um, and just get to the bottom of this. Tiene chuleta. Necesito dos pedazos solamente. Excelente. Gracias. Chao. All right, we're back in the kitchen. We've got pork from all kinds of different places. We've got the uh, shopping club you know, the wholesale club pork. We've got some from our butcher and a couple different grocery stores. And some of these pieces look a little suspect. I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, you know, maggots and worms started pouring out of this when we pour this Coca-Cola directly on top. So the goal here is to use the same kind of pork. You know, we have the pork chop, but at different levels of freshness. Uh, some of the stores were more sanitary than others. And so we'll see what happens. At this point, I'm just opening up the uh, packages that we got from the store. I haven't tampered with any of these chops. They're literally coming out of the package into the tray. And that's the funny thing about YouTube, especially things like this, is that maybe there's some behind the scenes stuff going on, or maybe not. Maybe we're about to get shocked with some pretty disgusting parasite events. So we shall see. All four of these chops come from different pigs. So we're gonna get a better, you know, more well-rounded experiment. The last two chops are from our local grocery store, and there is definitely a difference of freshness between these four chuletas, these pork chops. Some smell fresher than others. This one from our butcher, great looking center cut pork chop. Such a shame we won't be able to eat that. All right, let's just go ahead and get everything organized because the only thing that's left to do is to take our soda and pour it directly over the top of those pork chops, and that's it. Pretty simple demonstration from the videos that have been sent to me. Either Coke or Pepsi was poured on the pork, and uh, they all produce the same results. Whoa, <laughs> hang on. I guess I should quit shaking the bottle. Um, so yeah, the only issue uh, amongst the videos was the amount of time that you left the pop on there. Some said minimum one hour, some said minimum three hours. So here's what we're gonna do for today's experiment. We're gonna do a six hour time lapse condensed down to about 45 seconds. And then we're gonna come back again at 24 hours just so that we can cover the entire time uh, basis. And one last little thing I'm gonna do is take a turkey baster, 
through this entire process and continually baste those pork chops with soda just to make sure that there's, you know, pop on top of them at all times. So let's begin the six hours in three, two, one. Here we go. Um, okay, so after six hours of sitting inside Coke, basting the pork chops with the Coke, absolutely nothing happened. And I know there's gonna be some of you out there that said, you know, we didn't let it sit long enough. You know, some videos say one hour, some videos say three hours. We did it for six hours, but I'm gonna show you what it looked like at 24 hours, just so that we could put all that to rest. And uh, here we go, this is what it looks like at 24 hours. All right, so, so this is what it looks like at 24 hours. Nothing has changed. No worms, no critters, no moving pieces have surfaced uh, in the pork chops himself. And so I would consider the videos that are being sent to me and the ones that are circulating on the internet that demonstrate this to be hoaxes. Uh, the folks that are making these videos are frauds. And I know there are people out there that so desperately want to believe that worms come out of pork when you pour a pop on it. Uh, but it's fake, so now you know. And if you don't believe me, do this experiment yourself. The only sad thing is that you'll waste uh, whatever pork you pour the Coke on, so there's that. Okay, now let's talk about something that's real, and it's about a microscopic roundworm, a, a nematode called trichinalia. It's found in some pork, not all pork, right? Remember, it's found in some pork, and if you eat undercooked or raw pork, you could get trichinosis, which is bad. You could get muscle aches and fever and all kinds of really crazy stuff like that. All right, so if you work with pork at home, it's important for you to know that you can buy trichinalia-free pork. Now, that may be a little harder to do depending on what area of the country you live or what area of the world you live. So I'm going to share with you three things you could do at home. Actually, there's, there's five things, but only three you could do at home that will either destroy the trichinelia parasite or render it completely inactive. And it doesn't matter whether you get your pork from the supermarket or from your butcher, you can apply these three techniques to your pork. The three things you could do at home involve heating, cooling, and curing. Now there's a fourth and fifth thing that involve pressure and irradiation, which we're not gonna cover, but let's talk about heating. Heating involves temperature and time. And this deals with sausages, you know, pork chops, bacon, pulled pork, basically anything you cook, roast, things like that. You wanna make sure that you heat your pork to the appropriate amount of temperature and you keep it there for the right amount of time. For instance, if you cook your pork to 144 degrees Fahrenheit, it needs to stay at 144 degrees Fahrenheit for one minute and all the trichinalia parasite will be killed. If you cook your pork to 155, it kills it instantly. So making sure that you cook your pork to the right temperature for the right amount of time is absolutely critical. The second technique involves cooling, or in this case, freezing. If you freeze your pork at zero degrees Fahrenheit for five days, it renders the trichinalia parasite completely inactive. You don't have to worry about it afterwards. If you freeze your pork for, let's say, five degrees Fahrenheit, so a little bit warmer, you have to keep it in the freezer a lot longer, three weeks in this case. So both heating and cooling involve temperature and time, and you just wanna make sure that you get that balance right. I'm gonna put a link in the description box below that have the charts for heating and cooling, and that way you can check it out for yourself. And the third way involves curing, which is really more catered to those of you who are into charcuterie, and you gotta start off with the right amount of salt. So I recommend minimum 2% salt. Uh, if you follow any of my recipes on my website, we go with 2.5% salt, but minimum 2% salt in your dry cured products, and, but salt alone won't kill the trichinalia parasite. But when you couple that with the low pH environment, the acidic environment of a salami, and the acidity happens when you ferment a salami, that trichinalia parasite will not survive. So what about whole mussels? You know, whole mussels don't require fermentation. How can you destroy the trichinalia parasite in whole mussels? Well, you gotta start off with the right amount of salt. And that generally starts in your fridge when you cure your whole mussel. 
if you start off with the right amount of salt, and I'm talking minimum 2%, once again, if you follow my recipes on my website, I usually go about 2.5%. You can go as high as 3%, 3.5%. It's going to be a little salty, but you get the idea. Start off with the right amount of salt and then begin the drying process. And it's that drying process, the, the reduction of water activity, that's going to destroy the trichinellia parasite because it won't be able to survive in such a low moisture environment. Now, depending on the size of your muscle, you want to dry for at least a month, but longer is better. You're targeting 30 to 40% moisture loss. Everything should be fine, which is perfect for whole muscles anyway. And there you go. Those are three ways that you can do at home to either destroy or render the trichinellia parasite inactive. And I'm glad we could talk about it today. More specifically, I'm glad we could debunk this hoax of a video. And if you get a video like that, before you share it, run the test yourself so you can see with your own eyes. Thanks for watching this video. If you're new, we'd like to say welcome. Be sure to hit that notification bell. We post videos each week. And if you got anything out of this one, or if you found it remotely entertaining, a thumbs up would be great. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.